AnimatedAnatomy.com. Hello and welcome to Animated Anatomy. My name is Faris and in this lesson I will talk about the stomach anatomy. In my previous lesson I've talked about liver anatomy and about the liver um, microanatomy as well as some histology. Stomach is a muscular hollow dilated part of digestive system which functions as an important organ of the digestive tract in many animals including vertebrates. In most vertebrates the stomach is located between the esophagus that's right here and from the lower gastrointestinal tract we have the small intestine and more precisely the duodenum right here. The stomach is producing a protein digesting enzymes called the proteases and it's also producing the gastric acid to aid in food digestion. It is also providing a smooth muscular contractions before sending the food down to the duodenum where the nutritions are actually being absorbed. Now I will remove the skeletal system and I will try to create the cross section of our stomach right here. So we can start talking more about the structure and the regions of stomach. The stomach lies between the esophagus, as I already said and duodenum right here. Uh, it is in the upper left part of abdominal cavity. Now I have to turn on again the skeletal system. If you look at, well, this is where the abdomen is ending and where the thorax is beginning, and it's in the upper left part of the abdominal cavity. The top part of the stomach, so, so this part right here, it's actually lying against the diaphragm. Uh, lying behind the stomach is actually the pancreas. Here we see the pancreas. A pancreas is a glandular organ in the digestive system and the endocrine system as well. It has many functions, which some of them include actually producing several important hormones such as insulin, glucagon, somatostatin, and so on. The pancreas is also a digestive organ and it's producing pancreatic juice containing the digestive enzymes that assists the digestion and absorption of nutrition in the small intestine. These enzymes help to further break down the carbohydrates and proteins and lipids. There are basically two sphincters very important here. There is the esophageal sphincter, the lower esophageal sphincter, and down there here we have the pyloric sphincter at the junction of the stomach with the duodenum. The stomach is surrounded by parasympathetic and orthosympathetic plexuses. The parasympathetic plexuses are actually stimulating while the orthosympathetic plexuses are inhibiting. I will talk about this in my lessons about nervous system and further I will just explain a little bit about the blood supply of the stomach and moreover I will just concentrate on the sections of stomach and the anatomy of stomach as well. Now let's move the skeletal system again. Let's try to create the let's try to create the um, cross section and remove the pancreas. Now to explain the sections of stomach, uh, let's start by explaining the the one where the esophagus and stomach are actually connected. This part is called the cardia. It, it's actually where the food from the esophagus enters the stomach. The cardia is defined as the region following the Z line of the gastroesophageal junction. So this is the function and there is a Z line which you can notice histologically. That's the point where the epithelium changes from the stratified squamosis to columnar. Near the cardia is the lower esophageal sphincter as well. So that's the cardia. The next part is actually, let's do it like this, this part right here. It's the fundus. It's formed by the upper curvature of the organ. Then you have the body of the organ and body basically compromises, let's say fr from here all the way down to the pyloric part. Now the body, that's the central region of the stomach. Further, the more further down we go, we have the uh, pylorus 
and that is the lower section of the organ and it facilitates the emptying of the contents from the stomach to the small intestine right here. Now remember when I said that here the food enters the stomach and here it leaves it's really important I also mentioned these two sphincters the function of these two sphincters is really important for example here I also mentioned that the diaphragm is right above the stomach well if you have a hernia and the stomach protrudes through the diaphragm opening here and goes up there then you can have an acid reflux you'll have this burning sensation in your esophagus after quite often after a meal and you'll have to take the uh, anti anti acidic medication to to bring it down to to calm the, down the inflammation this can bring to changes in the esophagus and this can also lead to cancer and much more complications actually and if you look at down there we have the similar problem while here we have to empty the food out of the stomach and when we're doing that we're actually releasing a lot of acid as well in the duodenum now down there we have another uh, system how to stop that from damaging the tissues is basically this is a basic uh, we, we have a basic solution down there that's waiting for the acid to neutralize it so here is basic the acid comes from the stomach, it gets down there and it gets neutralized. And then the nutrition and everything can be absorbed. Now as I've promised, I will explain you a little bit about the actual blood supply of the stomach. Uh, let's remove all the arteries that are not really needed. Uh, we don't need the neck, pelvis, we don't need the lower limbs. This is pretty much what we need right so here is the aorta artery uh, it's descending aorta and remember if you look at the stomach we have the lesser curvature here and the greater curvature here now the lesser curvature is innervated with the right gastric artery here and the left gastric artery here the left gastric artery is arising from the aorta as you can see while the right gastric artery, the one that is blinking right now, is arising from a common hepatic artery. Now this common hepatic artery is quite important because one more, one more artery is arising from that and that is the gastroduodenal artery, the one that is blinking right here. And this gastroduodenal artery is actually providing a branch here called the right Gas gastroomental artery, the right gastroomental artery, and now we come to this outer greater curvature of the stomach, and the inferior part of this curvature is um, so the blood is supplied with the right gastroomental artery. Here, the inferior part was right gastric artery and the superior part was the left gastric artery if you look at it here this is the superior part this is the inferior part now if we look at the superior part of the outer curvature that is supplied with blood with the left gastroomental artery and the left gastroomental artery is coming from the splenic artery which is supplying the spleen with blood and actually this is the biggest branch of the splenic artery and you can see how it looks weird and this actually where you see a lot of these branches that's where the spleen uh, is actually and one branch just starts going down there and it goes along the outer curvature of the stomach now you can see that we also have some veins here we uh, the thing is veins in stomach are not as important as the veins down there in the smaller intestine because remember this is where the absorption is happening now in stomach absorption is happening as well but this absorption is not that important this includes water if the body is really dehydrated for example medication like aspirin aspirin is being absorbed in stomach or amino acids maybe 10 to 20 percent of alcohol the important thing that I will mention further when I explain the microanatomy 
Uh, and when I explain the histology of the stomach is that there are parietal cells of the stomach and these cells are responsible for producing the intrinsic factor and this factor is needed for the absorption of vitamin B12 and the vitamin B12 is used in cellular metabolism and it is necessary for production for example of red blood cells and so on and so on it's important for for function of nervous system you can see a variety of symptoms in the nervous system if you have a B12 uh, uh, deficiency what we offer now is very simple we offer you my very own animated lessons we offer you my very own anatomy atlas and 3d models in one package